All right, we're joined interview portion of today's show. We're joined by one of the men in Blazers, Roger Bennett. Roger, thanks so much for coming on. You're wearing a Chicago hat, says South Loop, just for us. How did you get a tie to Chicago? God, that is a long and deep question um, that is best shared with a therapist. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, the short answer is my great-grandfather was always a butcher. Chicago is the hog capital of the world. When he left Ukraine like millions in the early 1900s, that man was headed for Chicago, <laughs> Illinois. But the family myth is that when the boat docked to refuel, he, um, he, he it docked in Liverpool and he saw the one tall building on the Liverpool skyline was like, lads, we're in New York. <laughs> and he got off the boat at the wrong place to stop early and stranded us for decades uh, in the northwest of England, a magical city, Liverpool, not unlike Chicago, like a, a, a city that's in love with itself, that dreams big, that full of talkers and bullshitters and um, and just hucksters and human wonder. But man, it was dark in the 80s. I and mean, that's what I wrote my book about. And so in the darkest of times, it was like unemployment was massive in Liverpool, huge heroin epidemic. You know, I told myself I was an American trapped in an English boy's body. And I just dreamt always, you know, I spoke to my grandpa all the bloody time and he'd be like, we should have lived there. We should have <laughs> lived there. And that was it. So I set out to make my family's dream come true, albeit 80 years later, yeah. I finally move into the city. Well, and the book, which is now a bestseller. So congratulations. Not just a bestseller, a number one bestseller. Well, I'm the Chicago White Sox of publishing. That's right. Number one team in baseball. Number one book on the on the planet. We'll call it. Well, it's called Reborn in the, in the USA. And it sounds like it, I haven't read it yet. My apologies. I don't really read books too often, but I'm going to get this one. I need an audio book for the rest of the summer. Do you never do you have you done an audio book? God, I did do the audio book and it was, I will say, possibly the most shattering emotionally. They don't tell you. They're just like, yeah, just do it. It'll be, you know, you're a podcaster. It'll be wicked. It was like it was a big mistake for me not getting Meryl Streep to play me. I did it myself, <laughs> and it was it was like emotionally. I was like, it was hard to write the bloody book for obvious. Reading the book was just so shockingly emotionally shattering. I'm not. It's not clear if recovered, but yes, I do. Mm -hmm. And you're a okay, beautiful good. man. Because I'd love Give to hear. Listen. I can't imagine anyone else's voice saying your words, so I'm I'm happy to hear that. But as reborn in the United States, have you seen the news? The new, like, read more, like, no one likes America right now, but you, you're you the guy who loves America. Oh, I thought you were getting me all hepped about Alex Caruso. I'm like, have you seen the news? I'm like, I've seen the news. And I love it. I love the news. I'm like, so honestly, I arrived in Chicago finally uh, two days before Michael Jordan retired. And like, I felt personally responsible and devastated and filled with guilt. And then he came out of retirement, which was just, it was such a personal relief because obviously I'd caused the bloody retirement by pulling mm -hmm. up into the city. And honestly, the joy I felt that day, I felt it again last night, Alex Caruso um, signing for the Bulls. It's the second coming. It is happening. Uh, but you mean the news about America? How would you say it? I don't want to say it. You mean the news about yeah, America? The news is difficult to watch moment. right now. Yeah. But I, like, that's kind of why I want to read your book, because it's like it's, it's good it's, to be hopeful about America and appreciate America. It's why, it's, it's why I wrote the book, to be candid. I wrote the book in, you know, I grew up with, uh, with William Refrigerator Perry poster above my bed. That one that many of your listeners will probably have seen oh, yeah. where he's like grinning and he's elbowing mm -hmm. a fridge. It's like leaning wonkily over. Um, and I had on my bedroom wall a crudely painted version of the Manhattan skyline um, and a, a, a stars and stripes. And at night, I dream of moving to Manhattan. And I made that dream come true via obviously the greatest city in the world, Chicago. And um, and when lockdown started, when COVID hit uh, right at the beginning, those dark days, the end of March last year, when sports stopped. And like you guys, I build my life around sports. You know, I always mm -hmm. joke that um, sports is my structure, my meaning, my sense of connectivity. It allows me to feel things like pain and joy and misery and glory that most normal people feel in real life. But uh, I'm I'm dead to inside. So when sports stopped. I didn't know what to do. Like you did, you know, it was like, what, 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 how do we fill right, this space? Right. And I, I kind of reverted in that when the present was so, Manhattan was really overrun. When the present was so dark, I reverted to memories of the past that were joyful. And so many of my memories are 
you know, American related public enemy, the beastie boys, um, uh, run DMC, Miami vice, um, John Hughes movies, Tracy Chapman. And I just wanted to build the contours of my love and reconnect to the contours of my love for this country that as I was writing, you know, black lives matter, some are the agony mm-hmm. and trauma of that into the election. Um, and so, yeah, it was a funny and remarkable time to write about the love, but it's really a book about the power of the idea of America rather than the current reality, which I think is very healing. I, I love that. I, I It's not an original thought of mine, but it's the only place that's both a, it's a place and an idea. And I think that that makes America like very unique. So I, I am. That's not a bullshit. I am going to get your book. So, uh, you're, you're, so I, will you're, say, I will say I will say that idea. Uh, and we'll talk about Chicago sports. Um, fuck. Do you guys edit this thing? We, oh, yeah. We can. Yeah. Uh, well, you can because there's a dude who's just fucking got a buzzsaw out outside my window. And uh, can you, are you hearing that? No, 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 no. no, no you're no. good. Hey. 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 Then we left. <laughs> Here's what I'm going to say yeah. to you and to, to Peggy. If you are hearing noises, it's my neighbor fucking uh, gu- uh, gunning out, then... Um, I can deal with it, but I'm gonna wait for you guys to say your sounds. Yeah, no, we. I mean, we can edit, but we choose not to. Yeah. So that's just, the kind lo- of operation uh, we run here. So I, love rip and rip. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Let me know if it gets effed. Um, oh fuck! What the hell is this dude doing? Awesome. Can you hear that? Nah, we're good. I hey, mean, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Hey, America, America. <laughs> so, so I'd, say, I'd say that you um, when you. Um, when you have stood in a courtroom and become American, you know, mm-hmm. with 162 other new, uh, newly minted Americans, and you've stood in that room and you've said the oath of allegiance, and, um, you know, afterwards you share stories of what you have come from. And I had just, you know, survived a couple of late night chip shop beatings <laughs> in 1980s Liverpool. There were people that had survived civil wars and mm-hmm. famine, had crawled across deserts and worse. But when you chat afterwards and everybody talks about the American idea, it's in rooms like that that you realize that, you know, how the notion of America can give millions around the world hope, joy, confidence mm-hmm. and belief. And I think when you're a new American, you take none of that for granted. That is a beautiful sentiment. Speaking, I'm glad you said it. Speaking on that same realm, um, I, I know you're very familiar with Ozzie Gein. He just said the exact same thing almost word for word about a week ago because he he's from Venezuela, and obviously Venezuela is not the place you want to be right now. And he grew up you know, in a, pretty much a war-torn country, and, and he echoed the exact same thing that you just did. And, and so he hearing, plagiarized your book. Yeah, kind of. He he kind of did, man. He's a huge shocker uh, Ozzie, fan too. So Ozzy 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 is a book on tape kind of guy. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. The um, the uh, I can imagine Ozzy just yeah. just absolutely cruising down the freeway, going to meet Chuck Garfine and just being like, you know what? Yeah. Which book? I'm gonna I'm gonna no, I'm gonna listen to Rogers. No, you know what? I'm gonna listen to Eat, Pray, Love again. I love that <laughs> book on tape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you you are a Bears fan, you are a White Sox fan. That I you know, it seems like you came to America for hope and then you chose like some of the worst teams to live out that hope. But <laughs> the worst the worst teams are the best teams. They exactly. The yes. Thank you. The yeah. You were you were talking about how like like the the hope thing about being a sports fan is you feel like all these different emotions and 95% of being a sports fan is being miserable. The pain. It's yeah. the pain. That's, but that 5% of when you win a championship or you beat mm-hmm. your rival or whatever, that makes it all worth right. it. Right. That's why yeah. I, I, I'm I 35, and anybody that's my age that's a Manchester United fan, I hate their guts because they just were like, oh, I'm, I'm going to pick the best team. It's like being there. It's always their Lakers fans, Yankees fans, and Manchester United fans. Like they're all, they root for all those teams, and I hate those people. So I'm with you guys. So the so now that we just- I, 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 I think it's important though it really is it's like sports is an approach to life and what you said is true that 95% is being miserable mm-hmm. but I do think that it's being miserable in the safest possible way oh it's yeah like yeah. at the end of the day your team loses you feel a deep agony just the world has stopped just that you're never going to get over it but then suddenly you realize you've still got your arms your legs everyone's you know it's the, yeah. the you know you you walk away from the wreckage as intact as you entered it. And that is to me, the liberating joy of sports. But yeah, I've got four kids and I've made them all. It's been bloody hard because Americans love winners. I support Everton who are a football club 
in Liverpool who are like the Mets to, to mm-hmm. Liverpool's Yankees. I mean, there's not a lot of winning there. And it had to work bloody hard because Americans do like winners to make them Everton fans, Bears fans, White Sox fans. And my wife is like, what the, what the hell are you doing to these children? Why <laughs> would you even abuse. do that? Just, yeah. Why, she's, yeah, no, she is like, you're a sick, sick. I work, by the way, I did really work so hard. I had to work really hard at this. And I, I, ultimately what I've realized is that like life is bloody hard. Life is difficult. Life is full of challenge. And I think life is about um, when you find happiness, which is not every moment, but it, you know, when it occurs, the most important thing in life is to bloody savor it, not mm-hmm. to take it for granted and just go mad for it. And being a White Sox fan after this agony of just stale, listless season after season, numb hope, you know, being being an Everton fan is just every year saying this, this will be our year. Yep. Um, and being being a Bears fan, waiting for you know the Bears to either exhume Sid Luckman from his grief and <laughs> pad him up again, so that we finally have a great quarterback. Yeah. Um, by the way, I met Sid Luckman when I first came to Chicago, and I was like, I kissed him on the mouth. I was like, we need you, Sid Luckman. Uh, but I was joking, and the t- joke turned out to be bloody true. Yeah. But we're like Justin Fields, this. This will is, be our year. Is, I mean, is he is he a great quarterback or is he the greatest quarterback to ever take the field? That's essentially where we are mm-hmm. in our in our in our hyper. And I love it. It uh, is ultimately losing makes you prepared for life in mm-hmm. all of it. And that's why my kids, I'm proud that they love all of those teams. Now yeah. about this is probably this is about a year and a half ago. This was I remember it was really close to COVID was a thing at this point. So call it two Februarys ago or so. Um, I was looking for an EPL team to get into and, and I tweeted that out and, um, there, so a bunch of different EPL fans had responded to me and, um, they're like, oh, you can, you know, you could hop on the bandwagon, Manchester United, like all the big shot, New York Yankees, yeah. Lakers. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I need a fan base that's super loyal, but probably pretty small. I picked leads for myself. And I, uh, and they're like, I want, I want them to have that perpetual hope without ever winning. And they're like, oh, Everton. They're, it's like a carbon <laughs> copy of being a White Sox fan. And I'm like, that's it. That's my team. That's it right there. It's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the White Sox arguably have a better pitching rotation than Everton Football it's Club have had in the past good. 20 years. Mm-hmm. But my God, it's, and by the way, it's totally vested in the community. I was at Comiskey on Saturday night and I was looking around. Um, and just like the joy people were taking, the the feeling of deep community. What it's not a big tourist trap, right? Right, park. right. It's it's not. A, you know, if you're traveling to the great ballparks of America, Jerry Reinsdorf and his genius said, "I don't want one of those. Why would I have one of those? <laughs> then you'd have you'd have a lot of tourists coming. No, I want this to be a symbol of genuine, authentic Chicago pride. So I'm going to build this." In a way that you really got no one will enjoy, right? That, yeah, that, no <laughs> yeah, one, that yeah. nobody likes. <laughs> yes, 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 that's his. By the way, genius. Yeah, genius. Well, yeah. We, crowd. Dave and I always Man, talk that, about with the stadium. They could have, they could have constructed it. They were starting from scratch. Could have constructed it. So you could have had the skyline in the background. He said no. I don't want it. I want it to face point it the other way. Right. Point it to right. <laughs> point it towards towards facing the project. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's yeah, great. I, th- I mean, that's it. Why would we? Why would we want to have a beautiful lake where people in canoes can paddle to get the home run yep. balls that are hit out? When, yes, we could just hit them into 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 some public housing. It's true. I mean, I think Jerry's genius was to make sure that he knew he wanted authenticity. He mm-hmm. wanted true multi generational love, and Jerry has got it. The only problem is he needs to have teams that win. And finally, we have one, and that is that is the difference. Like I was there last in 2019, and uh, I went to the ballpark and threw out the first pitch, and it was me and about 30 people. Yep. Um, it was <laughs> genuine. It was like it was like a Men in Blazers live show, essentially, <laughs> in, in which in which some really good baseball players decided to to, to kind of play a game. Yeah. Like everyone was there was there to like see me. So it was a terrible pitch, yeah. the first one. Oh, it's really bad. And um, and then I went again on Saturday, and actually. I hadn't practiced, but I had a new mental approach to throwing the first pitch. And I was really 
four. It was quite. I could have given Larusa six innings, to be honest. <laughs> the 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 um. But it was packed, man. Yeah. It was so packed, and it was like the first time I ever went as a fifteen-year-old to Old Comiskey. It was packed. Yeah. It was joyous. I fell in love. I saw Harold Baines the first time I watched him just smack. Uh, I think a couple of runs that day. I only know that because the the White Sox were kind enough to send me the scorecard of that original game no, awesome. and I just fell in love and to see it full again was um it's been a long time that Dave. stadium's on fire right now yeah and like you said it's all it's all those authentic fans other than the Cubs fans yeah. who bailed on Wrigley and the team and had to come down to the south side that we don't like and we yeah. don't welcome but well, yeah well Roger now I got two final soccer questions for you and I feel okay. like you're the perfect guy for so, me to pitch this question to because I say it all the time on Twitter and people get furious with me but i think the epl and professional soccer leagues in general need a playoff system so i want to have relegations awesome the 17th team doesn't make it and then you have one through 16 playoffs how do you feel about playoffs as a like so you could have a real super bowl in the epl a real super bowl not the fa cup which i think is fake because it's it's i just they not everybody cares about it the same way like i want to have one champion bite your arm off for an fa cup but but you are my fault. Um, <laughs> I mean, I've got. I thought you were going that you want relegation in the NFL. Like I would that, love that to too. I love relegation. Would be, I would. Lo- I think. I think promotion and relegation is um, is is such a good. I mean, America imports all the worst crap from England, like Piers Morgan, <laughs> and it's like yeah, I'm like, why do you import that and not bring in promotion and relegation? I mean. That would be genuinely um, unbelievable. The mm-hmm. way you set your sports up in America, it's like Americans hate socialism. Like it's a, but w- w- the way you set your sports up. Oh, it's up, all socialism. It, it's socialism, but for really, really rich guys. I guess when you get to be really <laughs> a certain point where you're super rich, you're like, guys, guys, we're all really rich, right? And they're yeah. all like, yep. Yeah. And they're like, okay, let's do that socialism yeah. thing. Like, it's a, I, I, I don't understand it. Like, it's it's make sure those antitrust laws are straight and we'll just keep them on the books and everything yep. will be fine. Yeah. So, no, so no playoffs for EPL, though. No, I, I'll say I'll do play. I will do playoffs. That okay. is on the table. That is on the table for negotiation okay. with you. When you turn around and bring on the other side of the table, and I need you two to be the people that do this because you just got to put some muscle into it. When well, there's promotion and relegation in American sports, that would be hilarious. Yeah. I. The only thing is that as a Bears fan, there's a lot at risk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is true. So, We're talking about yeah, relegation yeah. and stuff. I'm like, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, we, yeah could the, I, the, we could be playing the, the Des Moines the, barn burners, yeah. you know, yeah. before you know it. That's not the same as playing the Packers. So, <laughs> the, and all of a sudden. The, 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 the joint barn burners, yeah. we proper hate that. Right, yeah, right. <laughs> okay, then my final soccer question, and I'm not sure if they ask you this yeah. when you're trying to become a United States citizen, but let's fast forward to 2026. The World Cup's here. The final, yes, it were any knockout stages. United States versus England. It's coming home, Roger Bennett. Which place is home? What do you think? I, Wait, really? I, like I don't know what, if you would refer you, England what, or us. Why? I mean, I, I kind of feel like you've got uh, immigration services on a hot button there, and you're, <laughs> you're pending the answer. To the door. Um, but it's a trap. I, 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 I mean, the, the reality is we don't have to look to the future as a theoretical question. We can look to the past 2019. Mm-hmm. Um, the U.S. women in the World Cup played England in the semi-final, and I've got to say, I, I, I ride with Team England now. I want to be clear. Like, did I just say Team England? What a mong. The, uh, the Team America in every single regard. It's like um, a, when you when you have dre- dreamt about moving here, when you have dreamt about being here, I mean, when you've watched the Chicago Bears Super Bowl winning journey and just like didn't just see. When I watched that Bears 95 season, 85 season, I wasn't just watching victory i was watching a team who were self-sabotaging losers perpetually who had mm-hmm. the best player to ever pull on their jersey walter payton and just crapped on him season after season by putting nothing around him mm-hmm. and finally somehow some way they worked out how to win and i watched that and it wasn't just about the game which it was but it was about um the ability to change who you are as a person like you don't have to be who you are you can turn around 
your identity. So like America has taught me so much when I finally moved here, like I was all in, in every mm -hmm. regard. And when the U S played England in 2019 and Alex, you remember Alex Morgan scored a goal yeah. and yeah. did that sipping tea. Yep. I mean, I was really was, I was like, that was a beautiful, I was like, suck it, Piers Morgan. You, <laughs> you, I mean, genuinely, he, he was the one just had crapping on our women all the bloody time in a run up to that, that moment, suck it, Piers Morgan. I'd just say whichever team Piers Morgan is choosing for, whichever side he's on, just a rule of thumb. I don't like to generalize, always take the other side. <laughs> But it's, I mean, it's America in every way. The women I really adore, admire, covering them is is the joy of a lifetime. And our men are getting so bloody good. There's yeah. so much, so much upside, man. Um, and with the World Cup coming back here, um, oh, it's a dream of American glory. Uh, I, Gio it, Reyna, Gio Reyna, Christian Pulisic, we're, we're close, right? We're, we're close to winning one? Closest we've you know, ever been? <sighs> It is. I have dreamt of American one day. And I love two things in life. I love America, which I think I've established ad nausea in the first five hours of my interview. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love football. Um, you know, coming from Liverpool, we didn't have much, but football and music were how we announced ourselves to the world. You guys had and awesome yep. music. Yep. That's true. We had, uh, I mean, amazing music and, and football. You know, we travel with our teams around Europe. That's how we, people knew us by our football. And I came here and Everton were in a semi final of, um, of a big game, the FA Cup. And God, the game was not on anywhere. I was desperate. And I ended up calling my dad. Uh, when long distance calls cost a fortune and he held the phone by the radio so I could follow along. And we've moved from there, 1995 that was, year on year. Just the growth of this game has been one of the joys of my lifetime. You know, when mm -hmm. I came, everyone in America didn't just like not care about football, they hated it. And now there's just a young audience who are truly fallen, truly madly deeply in love with the game. It's not replaced, it'll never replace American ball right. sports. It just augments and enhances mm -hmm. And um, these young guys right now, Christian Pulisic, Gio Reyna, Tyler Adams, uh, Weston McKinney, uh, Juventus, amazing. Yep. And they, you know, we used to get excited five years ago when one of our kids would play against those teams, Chelsea, mm -hmm. Dortmund, right. Leipzig. Yep. Now they're starting for them on the regs. And I, I don't like to, I'm a, quite a hyperbolic human being. It doesn't take much for me to go all in, Justin Fields. But like, <laughs> so I'm trying to rein it back, dial it back a little bit. But this is the stuff we've been dreaming of as long as I've been here. It's happening. Well, I can't wait. Roger, thanks I, so much for, for joining us here. Next time you're in Chicago, we'd love to have you come in studio because I, I, I had a great time talking Yeah, this to you. is a great time. My, my last question. Uh, real yeah. quick, can you give us your best Bears super fan SNL uh, with their accent and everything you know what the funny thing is it's not that funny it's tragedy really like i, I love america i always say i love america more than kenny powers loves america and all that crap <laughs> the one thing i don't have i've never had like i'm an american citizen now i've got four american kids i wake up in the morning that every morning they're at the breakfast table they're, i can't even do their accents they're like hello dad in their american accents i'm like holy crap this is mind-blowing mm -hmm. I, I don't have an american accent like i can't can't do it. Apparently, if you don't have a musical ear, your accent never changes. And all I can do, I can sound pretty much like the Queen Elizabeth saying "da bears." It's like <laughs> it's embarrassing. Well, it's, it's close genuinely. enough. It's in your heart. <laughs> it doesn't have to be in your voice. But Roger, Mate. again, thank you so much. That was incredible. And I hope we get to do this again. Yeah, soon. for sure. You, to you, uh, to everyone in Chicago, with great love and to more. Be safe, guys. Courage. Yep, you right, too. Next time you. you're in town, we'll catch a Sox game. Maybe it'll be a World Series game. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Maybe, Maybe. Yeah. it will be a World Series game. All right, thanks so much. Players, guys.